Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, as you can see by the title today, I will be reviewing Richard Shizmar's latest novel, Chasing the Boogeyman. Uh, I did talk about it briefly in my August 2021 wrap up, but this is going to be a way more in depth review. I'm very, very, very excited to talk about this one. I have a lot to say. And the first half of this video will be spoiler free, but then I do want to talk about a few spoilers in this book, just because I think it's definitely worth talking about. On a side note, I am wearing my Normal People Scare Me shirt in honor of Tate Langdon. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he is the um, one of the main characters from American Horror Story Murder House. I love this shirt. I got this shirt right when American Horror Story Season 2 came out, I want to say. Um, I love this shirt. I got this at a Hot Topic, but American Horror Story is one of my favorite shows to watch. And I just started watching um, the new um, season, I think it's season 10, double feature. And I've seen the first two episodes because those came out all at once. And oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. I feel like American Horror Story has these moments where like, it's really, really good. And then the season kind of fizzles out. Or it's just good all the way through. Like, I love Murder House. I love Coven. I was not a fan of Asylum. Couldn't finish Freak Show, though. Twisty and Dandy were terrifying. Couldn't finish Hotel because it reminded me too much of um, Seven. I really liked Roanoke. I really, really liked Cult. I thought Cult was great. I loved 1984. It was campy. It was cheesy. It was great. Um, Apocalypse was a cool spin back into Murder House and Coven. Um, watched all of American Horror Stories. Wasn't thrilled with it. I really liked the drive-in episode. Um, I thought that one was really, really good. The rest were kind of whatever, but I am so pumped on this new season. I think it's so great. Um, Ryan Murphy is one of those people where I either love the stuff that he does or I can't stand it. I thought the assassination of Gianni Versace was incredible. Was never a Glee fan ever. <laughs> um, but I do like American Horror Story quite a lot. And now that I'm rambling, um, I think y'all should check it out. The new season is set in... Um, what is it, Provincetown in Massachusetts, I believe. And it just makes me want to go to that town so badly. It looks so creepy and so eerie. And I heard that they actually filmed it there, which is so awesome. So definitely check it out. So far, two episodes in, I really, really like it. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get back into Chasing the Boogeyman. So I'm just going to read the inside cover for you guys really quickly. Before I do that, though, I do want to start this off by saying that this is a five-star read for me. I adored this book. I was blown away by this book. This is a very interesting read, but I will get into that later. So here we go. In the summer of 1988, the mutilated bodies of several missing girls begin to turn up in a small Maryland town. The grisly evidence leads police to the terrifying assumption that a serial killer is on the loose in the quiet suburb. And soon a rumor begins to spread that the evil stalking local teens is not entirely human. But law enforcement and members of the FBI are certain the killer is a living, breathing madman, and that he's playing games with them. For a once peaceful community trapped in the depths of paranoia and suspicion, it feels like a nightmare that will never end. Recent college graduate Richard Schismar returns to his hometown just as a curfew was enacted and a neighborhood watch group is formed. In the midst of preparing for his wedding and embarking on a writing career, he soon finds himself thrust into a real-life horror story. Inspired by the terrifying events, Shizmar writes a personal account of the serial killer's reign of terror, unaware that his time back home will continue to haunt him for years to come. A clever, terrifying, and heartrending work of metafiction, Chasing the Boogeyman is the ultimate marriage between psychological horror and true crime. Shizmar's writing, combining the storytelling of Stephen King with the relentless suspense of Michelle McNamara, is on full display in this truly unique novel that will linger in your memory long after you turn the final page. Um, Michelle McNamara, in case you don't know, is the woman who, um, uh, kind of did all of her internet sleuthing to help catch the Golden State Killer a couple years ago and then wrote a book about it. Um, well, I guess she died before the book was finished, but she, her husband, um, Patton Oswalt did finish it for her and it became a very huge success and did actually, um, her, her work did actually help them catch, uh, the Golden State Killer, so that's really, really cool. Anyway, I love this. I am from Maryland, so reading this novel, it was really, really cool because I can imagine the towns that this is in. There are multiple times where Shizmar references as places that I've actually been. He talks about Ellicott City and Laurel and a lot of really cool places in Maryland that I've been to many, many, many times. Um, and I, I love that. Um, I know that Ronald Malfi is from Maryland as well, so he talks a lot about Maryland in his books too. And 
just being from that location always amps a book up from me. I'm from Maryland, New York, and I have family in Jersey and lived in Jersey for a little bit. So those kind of settings really speak to me. I can totally understand why Stephen King writes so often about his Maine and his hometown. Um, because you do find horror in the familiar, which I think is really, really cool. And this is definitely a really interesting spin on that concept of finding horror in the familiar. This book tells the story of Richard Shizmar, who comes home from college and realizes that the sister of a kid he went to high school with has been brutally murdered, and it turns out that um, there is a serial killer targeting teenage girls in his hometown, and he is connected because of growing up in a small town to a lot of the families of these girls, and it's just him reflecting and doing his own personal sleuthing with his reporter friend to try and uncover the mystery behind these killings. Um, this this book is brilliant. I, I really enjoyed it. I found um, Shizmar's storytelling and his ability to put himself in the narrative very, very compelling. Um, I really liked his friends and his family and his relationship to the town, though not in like the gothic sense where the town is a character. The town definitely has character that adds to this story. It is all very isolated in the town. I think it's very important that um, Shizmar gives such an in-depth background on the town and how it came to be as it was in 1988. Um, and I just loved every every single thing about it. Um, I do have to say that to talk about this book fully and to give this a full review, I do have to put spoilers in here. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is kind of a semi-spoiler. It will not ruin the plot at all for you, um, and it kind I kind of said it in the, the little excerpt that I just read or the little blurb about what this book is about. This is not going to ruin the plot for you, so if you want to hear this, absolutely go forth and keep watching this video. I did talk about this extensively in my wrap-up and I'm going to continue to talk about it here. And then from that point, I will then tell you when I'm going to spoil actual moments of the plot. Again, this is not a spoiler to the plot of this book. This will not ruin anything in this book for you, but it is just a tad bit of a spoiler to the experience of the book overall, okay? I'm going to talk about it right now, so stop your, stop your computers if you don't want to hear this. But um, this does say in the flap that this is a work of metafiction, um, so it does kind of tell you that it's like quasi-fiction. When I first read that, I thought that this meant that this was like a narrative retelling of a true story. It is marketed to be a true story. When you read the, um, the, the foreword in the book, the, who wrote the foreword? What was his name? The foreword by James Renner. It is literally written um, to help create the illusion um, that is going on with this book. The intro to this book continues that. The afterword to this book continues that. Um, but this book is, is fiction. This book tries really, 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 really hard to make you believe that everything in here is real. This book tries to make you believe that this book was originally published in 1990 on Finished and then republished in 2021 with the conclusion since the, the killer at the end of the story is uh, revealed and caught in 2019. This book has multiple um, staged crime scene photos. Um, yeah, this book has multiple staged crime scene photos and like police sketches and everything. This book does everything in its absolute power to make the reader believe that this is real. Very much in the vein of Blair Witch Project, Paranormal Activity, all of those things. I believe in my last video I did call it getting Blair Witched and I 100% believe that. I thought this was a real true crime case and the one thing that should have tipped me off is I'm from Maryland um, I, I and I didn't know about this serial killer. Um, I'm from Maryland and I grew up during the height of the DC Sniper. I lived in the area that the DC Sniper operated in. He went to the same gym as my stepdad, so when he was caught on camera, my stepdad actually knew who he was. So I am very rooted and invested in true crime, especially true crime in my locale, and I had never heard of this. However, Shizmar does such an amazing job of painting the the tragedies that affect this town and the way it affects this town and the people in it that you 100% buy into it. I fell for this hook, line, and sinker. I thought it was 100% true, 100% real. I felt so horrible for these made-up families and these made-up victims and everything. And 
I, I'm stunned at how Shizmar was able to get into my head and really make me believe it. And I think this is, he's just a master of his craft in being able to do that. I thought this was absolutely brilliant. I cannot tell you the shock that I faced when I found out that this was fake, which I didn't realize until the very last page when he is thanking people. Yeah, okay. So if you really want an amazing, compelling read that really feels like a true crime narrative, even though it is not set in a real place that talks about and interacts with real people, this is a book for you. Um, it is inspired by actual um, events and kind of crimes that did happen in his small town. Um, I forget what the name of the town is. Oh, Edgewood. So it does talk um, about like real things that occurred in Edgewood that inspired him to write this book, but nowhere near to the extreme levels that this happens. Um, I, I really, really adored this. So I'm going to get into a little bit of spoilers now because I just find it very, very difficult to talk about this book in a full digested way without talking about spoilers. So I do highly recommend if you've made it this far and you have not read the book, stop here because I'm going to talk about the big reveal at the end because I think that is the most interesting part of this novel as a whole. So yes, if you've made it this far, the big reveal. I... I, I listen to a lot of true crime. I read a lot of true crime. Um, I'm very invested in learning about a lot of cases in the way that somebody's mind ticks to be able to um, elevate themselves from being just a person of society to the utmost villainous form of terror. Um, and I thought that Shismar did an amazing job of creating this killer. I think it was really, really interesting um, the way that as the murders went on, against the various girls that the extreme um that the extremeness um intensified and i found that very believable um but when we find out that josh is the killer and that is why he didn't treat natasha in the way that he treated the other victims that actually makes more sense from his own delusional delirious perspective as the killer versus the psychological um, momentum and motivation that I would have thought he would have had um, just as a killer in general. I would have thought that he would have maybe started small and then tried to build his way up, which is what Shizmar leads you to believe, which is why you don't think that Josh is the killer from the very, very get-go. And I think the way that Shizmar crafted that kind of narrative in here really showed that he has a true understanding of the um, psyche and ideology of today's classic serial killer um, and he was able to kind of broaden that. Um, I think it's interesting that like they do bring in a um, like a mind hunter behavioral an behavioral analyst um, and they kind of gloss over the possibility that it could have been a member of the family because they seem to have just excused the fact that how could it have been the member of the family right like it follows in the nature of the building up of becoming a serial killer to intensify your acts as you get better at them and more accustomed to them as horrible as that sounds so when we found out that it was josh i was just floored especially because he was so close to shizmar he was so close to his family he was pretty much in the, the story from the very beginning, and this is where I should have known it was fiction. <laughs> you can always find in a fiction book, um, this the serial killer tends to always be hidden in plain sight, especially if it's a really good fiction um, crime thriller with like a big twist ending. I talk about The Chestnut Man a lot on this channel. I think that's one of the best crime thrillers I've ever read, though I will say this is up there with it. Um, it didn't, this blew me away, probably as much as The Chestnut Man did, but The Chestnut Man, the reveal at the end, I really didn't see coming at all. I didn't see this one coming at all, but I believed it the second I read it. And all the pieces fell into place and it made so much sense. Um, but I, I loved that. I loved the reveal. Again, I probably should have been tipped off more to the, the fictionalization of it when we got to the interviews between Josh and Shizmar. Um, I found... <laughs> That felt a little fake. It felt a little forced. I don't think that the killer in a real story would have spoken that way. Um, and I did kind of feel that when I was originally reading the novel. I felt that it um, it felt dramatized. And I, I did think that a lot of this novel was dramatized from the very, very beginning. But I did believe that it was real, just, you know, a novelized version of a real event. 
Um, that being said, I think the scariest part of this entire novel is the realization of why Josh's father died. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I thought, I, I do truly, truly despise animal cruelty in books, but I did think that this is one of those cases where discussing animal cruelty worked to serve the plot and the effectiveness of it, and it was very, very minor in this novel. Um, but I did, I did love the conclusions that were drawn from knowing that his father found Josh at a very young age torturing a dog in the same way that he ends up torturing the women later on. That also gets back into the, the psychology of the serial killer where when they are children they do start with animals typically, unfortunately, and then move on. But the fact that this character would treat an innocent animal the same way that he would treat an innocent girl just shows his complete lack of empathy, his lack of humanity, and I thought it was such an effective scene. And it's so brief and it's at the end and it's kind of just this nice way to wrap up the whole mystery. Nice is definitely the wrong word, but just very tactfully done way. And I, I thought that was actually the most sickening part of the entire novel, was reading about how his father knew and was able to figure it out, um, but kind of didn't know how to handle it. You know, it gets back into the, um, I can't say this because apparently he sues a bunch of people, but um, there's there's one very 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 famous case where the theory is that potentially someone a daughter was murdered, and it could have been a sibling, and they believe that the parents didn't quite know what to do because do you accept losing one sibling to keep and cover for the other so that you don't lose both of your children or what you know um, hopefully hopefully you know what case I'm talking about but I'm not going to talk to you in depthly on that here. Anyway, I thought this was beautiful. I thought it was great storytelling. I thought it was really well written. I definitely fell for it completely thinking that this was real. And I think the biggest reason that I fell for it thinking it was real is because Shizmar did so much research into how like serial killers tick to be able to make this believable. Um, this felt like a case study on a bunch of crimes that have happened before. There is definitely a pattern to the psychotic um, killers out there in the world and I think he followed very closely and therefore made this very very believable. Of course the crime photos and his own um, putting of himself in the story really elevated and benefited this novel as a whole um, and it was a very gripping story. It was very um, oddly character driven. He gave a voice to the victims in a way that I feel like maybe wouldn't quite be seen in a lot of true crime stories and even though these women were fictional you really felt like you knew them and I think that he did a great great job giving voices to victims again even if they were fictional you know I really I really thought this was real and it wasn't and that's that's how good it is so yes this is a five star read for me um, definitely check it out if you're make if you've made it this far in the video you've probably already read that and I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on the story in my comments down below I'd love to chat more about this book this book absolutely blew me away I just I'm so thrilled with this and I'm so happy that I got a copy from Nightworms because I don't think I would have picked it up if they hadn't sent it to me, so thank you for that. Anyways, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday and sometimes on Saturdays. If you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Thank you all so much and I will catch you guys in the next one. Mwah.